Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all some of the experiments we've been doing with our freeze and fuse glass moons. So let's get started. Alrighty y'all, so we are here with, we have a 10 inch bullseye thin fire kiln paper on our 12 inch kiln shelf. I have powder grain, light blue, it's a translucent. Um, really at this point, um, like whenever it's this fine of a grain, I'm not really too worried about if it's a translucent or if it's an opaque glass because there's going to be so many bubbles that it becomes opaque and they're very, very small. And I'll show you guys what I mean, um, as we progress. So here I just have a little plastic Dixie cup. I prefer something non-porous. I've used the paper ones. And they just don't last very long whereas i've been using this same cup for like a year um and i have one cup for each color that i use so here i just have some water no actual proportions uh, that i'm worried about let me show you what it would look like if we had way too much water because this one this is about perfect where you can tip it off to the side and you can see the water kind of start to separate out so here this is way too much water it's taking the uh, most of the glass with it as I pull it up right it doesn't let me get a very big scoop so whenever that happens I just add in let's do three heaping four heaping spoonfuls and the good news is, is if you run out of glass, um, you can just kind of wick off the excess water. I really like a nice slurry, though. That is really <laughs> good thing I'm doing a lot of moons today. We put in too much water for the demonstration. So here we go. It's still pre-coffee in uh, my neck of the woods at the time of recording. Okay, there we go. Now the glass doesn't dissolve, it just gets water in between all of it. It's still very much powdered glass with no other additives. So here we have, I only use my very old silicone molds uh, after I'm done using them for resin because the, gr the glass does disrupt the surface of the silicone. So um, it'll almost give shiny silicone molds. It will, once you put glass in it for the freezing fuse, everything resin after that will come out significantly more matte. So uh, it, gives, it gives my resin molds second life though. Okay, so we're gonna come in and get a nice big scoop. And I like to just work with the mold on the table. And then I'm gonna tap the glass down and in I want to make sure that there's no bubbles, no opportunities for air pockets. And I want there to be enough water that it's going to carry. If I were using a more detailed mold, I personally prefer to not use very, very detailed molds. Um, just because you really lose a lot during um, firing. We can drip off some of the excess water there. And get another scoop with as little bit of water in it as possible. There we go. Let some of the water drip off. And then we can come in. And we're going to continue displacing the water with more powdered glass. So we can either drain some off or we can even come in and scrape. There we go. And so now all of these guys are going to go in and we can even tap it down a bit. We're going to let all almost made a mess. We're going to let all the water rise up out of this and then kind of like this guy over here, we can just drain off the liquid. 
and then we are going to pop these into the freezer for uh, I'll go check on them in about 30 minutes and that's this is something that I do this on days where it's I know I'm going to be home all day because every 30 minutes I'm going to be going to the freezer checking on our uh, freeze and fuse and well, yeah, that hasn't settled enough yet. I'm always rushing it, but. Um, yeah, we'll pop them into the freezer, make sure they're laying nice and flat, get them froze through solid, and then I'll meet you guys here for the next step. So it's been, honestly, it's been about an hour because the timer went off and I got distracted, but I've just removed these from the freezer, and you can see how easily they removed compared to the first time I was trying. Now you'll want to let these dry completely and do not touch them after you set them on your kiln shelf, on your kiln paper. Uh, I prefer kiln paper as opposed to kiln wash um, because it gives me a much, much smoother background uh, or backside of my moons. Little I'll show it when I'm not holding it. I don't want to, like, I do not want to melt that water with my hands at all if I can help it. So we are just pulling up out of our molds. There we are. Now that actually has just a little bit, well, let me move it so you can see. So this one actually has a little bit of a discoloration that is from the um, there was like some pigment in the mold, the glass wicked it up and, uh, we'll see how that fires out, but you don't really have to worry about this one here, how it has that little pox mark as well that fires out really nicely. And so I'm going to keep doing this all day until, um, until we have a full sheet. And then I actually leave this sitting on top of our kiln where it gets really nice and hot whenever we'll be running it tonight um, so that this all, it bakes all the moisture just by, by sitting on top of the kiln here. I'll show you in a minute. So our moons are starting to dry and you can see the difference between one freshly taken out of the mold, one that was taken out about an hour or so ago, and then the first ones that we did. And the color change is just from the moisture content wicking out of them. And then here we've got just some more, which once we drain off the excess, I just kind of like tap to try to settle out all of the air bubbles. And honestly, it's a good idea to do that before the moisture settles out of it. That way it just lets the uh, glass be like a sediment and settle to the front of the mold. And that way we get nice, smooth. I touched that one with my finger. That should be fine, though. It shouldn't be a big deal. We'll see. <laughs> so, just keep it on with it throughout the day. So, these are the moons the following morning. Now, you'll see here we do have two different colors of glass um, going on. I have a significant amount of cracking this time, which I don't know is from the water content like maybe I was making it too watery so then as it froze it expanded and now whenever it like I think more data is required um but I'm gonna see how the cracks do through fusing I think part of it also maybe from the kiln paper got wet and so it like wrinkled um so I don't know we'll see it's been Honestly, it's been over a year, I think, since I've done, or at least around a year, since last time I've done freeze and fuse moons like this. So, uh, kind of winging it and just sharing what's happening with you guys. Um, but I am waiting for the kiln to currently cool down. I didn't set this on top of the kiln because I thought about it and I was like, I actually think I'm not supposed to do that. Even though, like... I do your own research on stuff before just trusting what I do because one time we heated up a lasagna on top of our kiln but it was cold and we didn't want to run the microwave so we just set the whole lasagna pan on top of the kiln uh so yeah definitely do your own research before um <laughs> sorry uh oh boy 
be better than us. Don't cook lasagnas on your kiln. And it was pre-cooked anyways. It just needs any... We've also done wings on top of our kiln, like <laughs> wrapped in foil. Again, just reheating them, but I don't know if you're supposed to do that. So certainly do not take things that I say uh, as like the best way of going about it. It's uh, I'm just sharing our experience with you guys. So we're going to let the kiln currently cool down from its last load uh, that we ran last night. And then we'll be popping these guys in and I'll show you that step next. So here the kiln is loaded. We have the moons on the same kiln shelf that we had been keeping them on with, um, I think the camera's shaking because I'm standing on that board with it. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> it's a 12 inch kiln shelf on one inch kiln posts. Our kiln is a Paragon CS16S, so it's a 16 inch square bed that's about, oh, maybe seven inches deep, seven or eight. Um, but I really only ever load it to about like this high. And if you're interested in more videos about that, you can check out our fused glass playlist. But we're going to go ahead and can't quite reach it. There we go. Close this down. And then the firing schedule is in the video description below. So, uh, oh, and I just kicked the tripod. This is so pro quality. Alrighty, y'all. It is the following morning. Okay. Ooh, okay, so it definitely looks like the cracks translate. Let's get a closer look. Well, drag. So yeah, the cracks definitely translated, but also you guys, I am freaking in love with these moons, the ones that came out right. Now, the ones that are in pieces, um, stay tuned for future tutorials because I want to show how to use some broken moons in maybe some polymer clay or maybe some ooh like a stained glass style I don't know but what we're gonna do is we are gonna take these off of here we go outside where it's nice and ventilated and we wear our face masks because you don't want this crap in your lungs and then we dump it into this bowl of water and then we wash them and on uh yeah let's get to it so once things have cooled down entirely from in the kiln, I just come through with some water and a scrub brush. And on the ones like this moon here that has some dimpling, I think we're going to put this through to try to fire polish it again to just try to even it out. I may do a little bit of grinding to clean up this back edge. It's a little pokey. But then other ones like, ooh, this one's real pretty. I mean, they're all pretty, but like, it just has some veining from where there were cracks, but it's still fused together really nicely. Again, this one's got a little sharp spot right there that's gonna need cleaned up. But whether we're putting it right into, right back into the kiln or whether we're getting right to working with it, uh, they need cleaned either way. I'm really interested in experimenting with more of these freeze and fuse techniques because these are super cute little moons and even though they're thin oh there's the dogs even though they're thin they are quite strong so i'm very very pleased with that but as thin as they are if we put this through on a full fuse cycle it would try to it would retract till it was six millimeters thick so i really like just doing the firing schedule that we have down in the video description um if you have any experience with freeze and fuse glass, I would love to any advice that you might have to give. Um, and some of these, honestly, I kind of like the cracking. I think it gives it a lot of character, especially if we had done, oh, like a the vanilla almond. I know that sounds like a flavor, but and I don't think that's what it's called. But it's like this cream colored. It's not white, but it reacts really well. Um, of glass it could really look a lot more like bone I think so experimenting with different colors maybe different blends of colors I don't know we'll see what we have in store but <laughs> it's getting loud here in the kitchen uh, if y'all have any questions comments or ideas please leave those down below uh, I do love hearing from you guys and I try to get back to you when I can um, and if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them how long was that dog gonna? You done, Sam? You good?
He's just drinking water as loud as he possibly can. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our Happy Crafter Club. For just a dollar a month, you get access to an, a 20% uh, discount to our shop, as well as our exclusive uh, Friday live stream after parties. And you'll be first to know when we do have new shop updates. That one came out kind of weird. Um, but yeah, uh, info for that is down below. We also do our booty boxes uh, for our Happy Crafter Club, which um, more information, like we've got a video linked down in the video description. Uh, or maybe, even maybe, Vaughn, future Vaughn, please edit and put in a little link up on the page or something. But it will at least certainly be down in the video description uh, if you're interested in the booty boxes. That way you can use our artwork in your works of art. So until next time you guys thanks for being here and happy crafting Mwah. bye oh god my hand is all covered in like soapy water okay